I can remember coming into Portland International Airport and being met by my family and I was so enthusiastic about what had happened. Getting off that airplane and having your four-year-old son you know, run up to you and in just pure delight, pure joy. And that's again, that's why I'm doing this, is because you know, hopefully I can teach him to pass it on, to do special things like that. Re-entry is, is uh, always exciting because you come home to the things that you've missed, but you also come home with a very exciting story. The first thing that I noticed was they couldn't identify with the experiences that I had had because they had not been there. But they were good listeners, so I asked permission to talk to them. Can I tell you a little bit about this or that? I remember Kurt riding home with, driving me home and saying, you just talked the whole way home. He told me this about two weeks later. You just chattered the whole way home, but I just let you talk. And so you're very fortunate if you have a family member that can allow that to happen. I think the biggest gift is um, for re-entry for me is sharing. It, it helps you process. You have a, a huge amount of um, what you've just done to share with people, but not everybody wants to hear it. So understand that it's great to tell people what you did, explain to them what moved you to do it, um, encourage other people that they can serve regardless of where they're at, but your story needs to be short. You know, I have a second family at the fire department. To tell those guys the experience, I can't tell you how many people that I work with want to do the same thing. I mean, it opens the door. And it's, it's so good for, for all of us if we can have these type of experiences. Because we tell one person, that person tells one person, three people, four people. And pretty soon your story has touched a lot of people. Has, it's been heard. A difficult part of debriefing is, as I said, going into the nearest Safeway store or Costco or wherever it might be, Winco, wherever it might be that you are going to go shopping and seeing all the abundance and you're used to being in an area that's severely poor and, uh, and that's trying to, trying to leave that extremely poor world behind and then come back into an abundant world. And not only that, but listening to people who com seem to complain uh, and we all know that that's within our environment. They seem to complain about things that we don't consider to be that important. But it, I did learn a lot about patients. I learned that what seems to be important to them is probably important to them and it would not be right for me to judge that as, as trivial. Believe it or not, I missed the refugee camp. <laughs> I missed the little kids who um, I would see every day who um, we're so joyful in so many ways, just joyful to be alive, uh, and who found joy in small things, like maybe a little toy that they had made out of some wire and some straw. I miss that simplicity and coming back into a very complicated world. Um, and I had to take all of that into consideration that uh, I didn't have to leave behind that simple world, but I had to um, integrate that back into where I was coming back into this abundant world and not say, you know, you people, you have so much to not make judgments is uh, you know, very important. But your re-entry really depends on taking care of yourself. Be able to express how you feel, be able to rest, be able to connect with the people that have missed you because their life went on while you were gone and you might have missed some things. Um, it's really important just to take care of yourself, but to be able to verbalize how you're feeling. Work through those feelings. Um, it may have been chaotic. It may, might have been frightening. Um, it might have just been really difficult. Uh, or you might have gotten sick or not been able to sleep well. But the main thing for reentry is to just be able to work through your experience in a positive way. Oh, come back, Mary Ellen. <laughs> okay. So maybe yeah. um, the <laughs> actually, Mary Ellen, if yeah. you walk in from this side, because yeah. the mic is over yeah. here. Sure. Okay, well, I'm going to be taking this bag on my next mission, which is into Liberia. And inside this bag, uh, the team here has packed uh, dressings and instruments, uh, tape, gloves, uh, skin sanitizer, and even the sanitizer for your hands. Uh, you give them a list of what you want. I've done that. and. It's in here. And so I'm really excited about getting to take this on my trip with me. Hey, Marie, oh. just before you go, listen, I want to give you this uh, bag uh, return receipt slip so that it, when you come oh. back into the United States, 
Yes. You can ship this bag from anywhere inside the United States directly to us. Okay. And I know you often hand carry them, but for our other volunteers, right. this is a great mm. piece to have. Okay. Okay, okay. so and I can't ship, I can't send this from Liberia. I have no. to come inside the right. United States. Right. Okay. Please don't send that from Liberia. Well, this, one, this is a <laughs> wonderful thing to know about. These bags are very important. It's important that they get back here to the warehouse so they can go out again and take supplies all over the world. If these bags could talk, they could tell a lot.